Eriko Hudumedi say, Ibileke Remoho, and a compliments of the new season. Has a little bonana of tilling. Hanerly in the wilderness. Rewile in the wilderness, Regamo Studio Gajeno. Mitzolo Fellow Gehori. Rico Hona Hokiria Lindsay. La Mudimo. Mola Wone Wamatomo wa twenty twenty four. Me fa kun se bealo ke ne ke go dumedisa ka matlodana se we sele ha ba re ha o file mo rena ha o finyana ha ona gore ka phela ngo teng ha re sa file ha re sa phele ha o file ena ka go ne ha re mo ka tudile re tla berile mo lefeleng mo go sna ntuso mo teng mo re tla berila tlhegile ya ka dingutse di sna modisa Mary Piller Trots and a Motape Long Go Hopes a Happy. Our WhatsApp number, I am a studio more. A key zero six three two one zero seven eight three four. Uganawa a Latin now WhatsApp. Cotta Uganawa a Romana voice note. Yanaboha. Would you want that your matter or take a little more than I just so crest? Rale boha mungabo pelo. How the CDC say how to have mungahe 2023? What if it is our mungahe 2024? Meka huri alo mudi mori ayit hore aratse la kamata arona. Retete kanche ngabo pelo chomoki hamohle la ratola ha. Hume fa hunse be alo. Re afusi mola tire lo mudi mo esa lengiru na hanya kuena. Meka ahula le ta mudi mo hore tena le rona. Mo re tele pili, o re tele pili mo di mo. Bula mai kuto di kalo hanyo di pelo ta mo reti. Me re mo laeta onto mile mo koreketo kasa. Er ha ufita mo bo na mo di mo ufita le di pelo ta di bulehi le. Me mo di mo aga ha kera pelle mo reti fela kera pelle le de radio station, Good Life Radio. Mo di mo aga ise kofati. Ya aga ite re pa he ka mangana. E kasalin zula ha, umudi mo kia ba kope na kura kuba ukeleti, ba bone di peto humonga hewa 2024. Kuhuku pili umudi mo se hufata zote, mo lini la rara mo rala mo ya uwitepo. Amen. Ere kuhudume di se hapa mo reti, mire haki kuhudume di sa kuhulale tukor arta ne moho, mo tiri lang e ya matoma ya nta ya mwa hawa 2024. Exodus 33 verse 12 to 18. Make a leme like a little more Verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, Take these people up to the promised land. But you have not told me whom you will send with me. You call me by name. And tell me I have found favor with you. 13. Please, if this is so, show me your intentions so I will understand you more fully and do exactly what you want me to do. Besides, don't forget that this nation is your very own people. Verse 14. And the Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses. I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. 15. Then Moses, Moses said, If you don't go with us, don't let us move a step from this place. 16. If you don't go with us, how will anyone ever know that your people and I have found favor with, with you? How else will they know we are special and distinct from all other people on earth? 17. And the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for you have found favor with me, and you are my friend. Verse 18, which is the last. Then Moses had one more request. Please, let me see your glorious presence, he said. 
Ere ke boele morago ke ba le verse 15 because this is the verse e ke batlang re tlo bolela ka yona this evening. Then Moses said, "If you don't go with us, don't let us move a step from this place." In other words, Moses said, "If you are not going with us, we are not going." This is the word of God. It was to record, record the events of Israel's deliverance from Egypt and development as a nation. The purpose on our recorded the events at the Odia Telet and Hori, Aban Seko Ehepeta. At the same time, Aban Seko Ehepeta, Mudimu Une Aba developer to be a better nation. The date on which this book was written was between 1450 to 1410 BC, approximately the same time as the book of Genesis. Now, always when you write a letter, there must be an audience or there must be a recipient. Now, in this case, the recipient of this letter or the audience of this letter, book, was the faithful Israelites and future generations, which is me and you. Because we are the descendants or generations from the Israelites. Now, this book was written in the wilderness during Israel's wandering somewhere in the Sinai Peninsula. In the wilderness. In any part and parcel of the development, or have a feature in the promised land, a really changed people. Now, in this very same book, only three key verses, which is 3, 7, and 10. Then the Lord told him, You can be sure, I have seen the misery on my people in Egypt, I have heard their cries. For deliverance from harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You will lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So these are the key verses of this book. Now, the key people, we're talking here of Moses, Miriam, who is the sister to Moses, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter, Jethro, Aaron, Joshua, and Bezalel. But in this case, our focus is going to be solely on Moses alone. Now, there are special features in this book. Exodus relates more miracles than any other Old Testament book. And it's noted that Moses so more, so more miracles than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob combined for containing the Ten Commandments. In other words, the miracles that Moshe are the warning in these books, which are special features. Kitelum Hori, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have a court Moshe Obwani the miracles steady fit on this trio combined together including the Ten Commandments. Now, the name Exodus comes from the Greek word, ex-hodos, which means out. And hodos, which is a Latin word for exit, meaning way out. That is why in the Exodus, in other words, the Israelites were on their way out of Egypt. Or Haribia, a simple term. Reganarari, the great trek. Bane Bahudua. From Egypt to the promised land. Now, let's go back to the weight. 
But before I do that, I want to touch on verse 3 of this very same scripture. What is Exodus 33 verse 3 explained? Now, how live in Exodus 3? Mudimo on a strong word. Very, very strong word. As God has said, I will not go up with you lest I consume you or destroy you on the way. Give us three. Hamudimu o araba moshe. Horenka samai lue na moshe le batuba. Hose me ala hari kroza mane we. Batuba, I'm going to destroy them. Mutele. And then, not only that, why would you have to learn how I will destroy you? For a moment, I can not learn I will destroy you. For you are stiff-necked or stubborn. Insubordinations, ill-disciplined people and very destructive. These are very strong words. Say no more deeds are from your maker. Hurry. In other words, Onara, I won't tolerate what you are doing. Because of your stubbornness, you do as you wish. I'm trying to change your thinking. I'm not going to tolerate this. So the best thing for me to do is not to go with you at all. Now, in other words, God has said that if he goes up with them, he will wipe them away, all of them. He will wipe them along the way. But, very interesting. And remember, chapter 33, it is more like a conversation between Mudimu, Li, Mushi. And at some point, if you go down with the same chapter, Ebulela or Mudimu, Nabulela Li Mushi face to face. But that is not contradiction. I will explain later for why never face to face. But Moses said that if God is not going up with them, they won't go either. Maybe Don Hanor, maybe Moshe is being cocky or arrogant. He was talking to his friend here. He was talking to somebody who I believe more. He was talking to his father. He was talking to somebody. Why it's in Hurhana He's not afraid of anything. Then one mother, no. If you are not going, I'm not going. And these people also are not going. Now, why Moshe Avatar the presence of God? Now, how Moshe Avatar the presence of God? Okay, put the pot. How are he, was he going to survive or grow without the presence of God? Because he knew. And like I said earlier on, he saw so many miracles than the trio. But nobody the miracles said into of the war. Now, he knows exactly what happened with confidence and then how will anyone else know that we are your people because if we're not when we have this mark we are distinct we are different from other people but how is really one how are people going to differentiate us regards finally everyone in the mainstream the truth is here Obviously, they are nice people all over Murtaman Mute. Hunanabatu are only very innovative. By law, they are move, movers and shakers. Now, if you say so, this is not what Moshe was referring to. Lord, we need your presence. There is no way in which we go to Amaya without your presence. Then others saw that others can see. When you talk about a soccer game, you talk about a team, a certain mark in terms of 
You can identify them. This team is and so because you know Kirikalastavon. Just like the churches, So in that way, you can distinguish between and this is exactly what Moshe was referring to. Now, somebody would, would think, "Have presence here, We will be magnet to others because of the presence of God. Something worship will draw other people to us, like singing and praising. Somebody would think anointed preaching will draw others. Healing will draw others. Testimonials. God's power will bring in prodigal sons. Prophecy will conduct, convict, and convert. But this also is not the case when we talk about the presence of God. Now, the presence of God is something that matters and these things happen as add on i want you to understand me all these things that i have mentioned declutter as add on in the presence of god you can have this electric praise and worship songs then you can get people coming in joining you celebrating and so on but those are add on it's not yet what is it it is, it is intended to now this will bring me to our theme tonight the name of the theme or our theme tonight spiritual restoration and revival why spiritual res restoration remember Barnabas Israel while they were in Egypt they were spiritually dead because they followed idols they did everything wrong which was happening in Egypt they forgot about their roots. They forgot about their teachings. Hence, Mudimu file Moshe milau eli sume kore ato ba develop akayona ato restore the spirit se umudimu aba file so on. Now, we must have God dynamically present among us by the Holy Spirit. How Moshe Ari, we want your presence to be with us. He was referring to the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, there is no way but to move. Now, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, you might think if God would be there personally, what was going to happen? And this brought me to Bukaya Luga. Nagoya Mudimo, Bukaya Luga and the other gospels. Nagoya Murana Jesu Asanzane Atamaya appear physically. Mobatu. He attracted a lot of crowds. He attracted a lot of crowds. And then, Hubol, at some point, Murana Jesu, there was a man who was sick. They had horebat katamule the roof horebatense mutu o horemrena Jesu amufodise. Now, can you imagine if God is present? What was going to happen? It was going to be chaos. It was going to be chaos. But in this instance, Moses was referring to the Holy Spirit, and then he said, "Lord." Don't send us here unless it looks like Moses was now giving orders. Don't. 
It sounds more like he was God giving God instructions. And then he said, we need your presence. Because without your presence, we are nothing. And remember, the last Thursday, yeah, last month, we spoke about Eben Ezra, where the Israelites said, until so far, God has protected us. And this is exactly what Moses was telling God. Now, how do we get the presence of God? There is no guarantee. Yahorito from another presence of God. There is no formula. Yahorito get the presence of God. But we can be sure Horito get his presence because of the promise that you will get when you ask. There is a promise that you will get when you ask for what you need, not what you want, for what you need. And if you need something and you ask from God, you will certainly get it. And at some point, you will think, I've been asking God for something. For so many years, God has not answered me. But if you can look deeper, God in a different way. It's just that we're now living little on the one side only, how I live holistically. Now, again, let me ask this question. How do we get the presence of God? Number one, the wilderness. And remember, we spoke about the wilderness. When John the Baptist was crying, a voice crying in the wilderness. The wilderness, it's a place where you need to concentrate. There are no distractions. As a result, you get to talk to God. You get to meditate. And you get to get instructions on exactly how can you proceed and develop your life. Now, there is something in here about God not being able to draw near to them. Because of what? Because of two things. The quality of their lives which is holiness, number one. Number two, it says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. What is the quality of your life? In other words, life here, how? How do you live? And if not God is if God is not central in your life, you will never experience his presence. Now, I have two more questions. When you want the presence of God with you or with us, like Moses, God was talking to Moses. But Moses had responded to God, and I will explain that later. Now, if you seek or you need the presence of God, there is a criteria that we need to fulfill in order to qualify for his presence in our lives. Number one, You've got to be prepared to let go of those things that offend God. Because God will not get into your life. All those things that you offend are. What am I talking about here? Remember verse 3 of the same scripture spoke about people being stubborn, stiff-necked 
disruptive, disorderly, disrespectful, unruly. You can name them. As long as you still have these characteristics, you will never experience the presence of God in your life or in our life. That's number one. Number two, we need to learn his ways. We also need to be teachable because if we are not going to be teachable, it means we're still going back to our old ways of life, which is what being stubborn. We cannot be developed. And this is, this is part and parcel of training so that when they get into the promised land, who are developed. Now, what did Moses do? Instead, he kept on reminding God, for when you made a promise to me, and when you remember the very same people you will destroy them, you will wipe them away. It's your nation. Now, after reminding God, he did something. He interceded on behalf of the Israelites. Now, in our lives, we need intercessors. Who are you praying for? Who are you negotiating for? We need somebody. And at some point, somebody is interceding for you and you are not even aware. Moses is setting an example here. And, like I said, he kept on reminding God. God promises here just to do a special thing with him. Remember, he said, Moses, I will go with you. In other words, I won't go with these people. I'm going with you. And I'm going to protect you. I'm going to give you protection. I'm going to give you peace. But Uga Moses hurry. He said, no, not me alone. You can't go with me alone. What am I going to do with these with this people? And I want you, God, to go with us. And here Moses is playing a very, very important part. He was not being selfish. No, I own Peter a friend. Therefore, Luna, you are useless. Therefore, I don't want to be associated with you. But no. He said, God, not only me, but us. Now I'm asking you, who are you praying for? Who are you protecting in your community? in your church, in your workplace. How about a more and about a little and about let's do this and this. Do you forget about the Batubaba and say, no, the favorite of management, the favorite of working now, good thing. I don't want to be part and parcel of these people. My friend, you are lost. Definitely you are lost. And here we are getting into 2024. We are not going unless with Amalirona. And yet, you are not interceding for your brothers, your sisters. And you expect God to go into 2024 with you. All of us. That is what Moses said. But has to more. He went a step further. He said, God, bless these people. Even if they did not ask you to bless them. Even if they don't deserve to be blessed. But I am praying. Bless them. Show them. This is the distinct 
This is the mark I was referring to for how are people going to differentiate between Ronaldo and Tuavawe. But if you bless these people, Baur and Bastabon, they might change. People might see difference, Mohubona, but not me alone. You can't bless me and leave these people out. Hagisuru and a month and what they move a little more But to walk a little one, have all level of a ring. Hagisuru and a mole and what they how level of a to walk a little one or ring. Moses did not even think for a moment he is better than everyone else. Instead, he was part and parcel. Hence, Aramudimu. And even if what they don't deserve your blessings. But I am praying for them. I'm praying, I'm asking on behalf of them to bless these people, even if they don't deserve it. Now, when you look at this intercession, there is so much power when somebody is praying for you or when you pray for somebody. Open heartedly so. There is so much power. There is so much power. And then as a result, Moses got a blessing for the whole nation because of what? Intercession. That is why Mudimahau Muharaba, he said, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you as Moses and I know you by name. Do you see, do you see how powerful it is to pray for somebody? Because God can see through your prayers. Are you praying with good intentions or not? And once God has seen them, He's going to bless you and bless the whole nation. Because who is a Yeah, in one of the Psalms are I have written your name in the palm of my hand. I know you. I knew you before you were even born. But I can only bless you through somebody who is praying on your behalf. That is the power of intercession. There's a role that each and every one of us need to play as well. You are not just going to go with the flow. You need to ask The Bible says, ask and you will receive. If we ask as a group, as a church, as a community, as a nation, we will receive. God will give us everything that we are asking for. But it has to be good in his eyes. If God think it is good, then we will receive. For instance, God will never bless you or give you what you want if you want to kill your brother or your sister. That God will never grant. In the book of Habakkuk, Mudimu Oblet through the mouth of the prophet heard that vision I was referring to. If it doesn't come, it has just been delayed, but it's going to happen and you are going to see it in your lifetime. At times, Mudimu, you ask him. And umukube, urapele, urapele, mudimu ubono asahuufi. Then, that is a test. Remember this part, we will revolve restoration, development and revival. It's a process. It's not yet an end product. 
Now, while you wait for God to reply, what are you supposed to do? You need to pray. Not only to yourself. Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray for your community. Pray for your colleagues at work. Ask blessings on their behalf from God. Now, I was saying Moses was an intercessor. Being an intercessor, you have two characteristics. The first one is to persuade. The second characteristic is to plead. Now, why am I saying this? In his intercession, Moses was persuading God to bless the Israelites. He was persuading God, but at the same time, he pleaded with him. Remember earlier on I said, it sounded like Moses was giving instruction. No, he cannot give instruction to God. He was pleading. He was persuading God. But at the same time, his persistent prayer, Moses would never take no as an answer from God. He stood in the gap between God and the Israelites. Several times in this scripture that we just read, Moses repeated so many times that God, we will not go with you. We need your presence. In other words, when you pray, you pray without ceasing. You must be a persistent prayer, whether good or bad. Because God, because Moses, he knew God's heart. He knew God's nature and his desire to bless more than we could imagine. Remember, Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Allah delayed the Ten Commandments. So he knows exactly what God wants and what God does not want. Talking about persuading and plea. In the very same book or in the book of Genesis, chapter 28. When Jacob a traveler from his uncle, Abuela Murahu, he was about to meet his brother, Omu Betrayle. Instead, Horatamai, he sent Ms. Basadi Bahai, Bana Bahai, Lidi Rui Watahai, and he stayed behind. And what happened was, in the middle of the night, he started wrestling with somebody he does not even know. He wrestled with that very same man the whole night. And in the morning, this man said to him, let me go. No, I won't let you go unless you bless me. I won't leave you unless you bless me. That is the attitude, Yamoshi. Because And then he wanted to keep the presence of God. He wouldn't let him go. That is why it is so important that we need to ask the presence of God in our lives. Now, the next thing that I want to mention here. If you want the presence of God, the question will be, where are you going to be in order to get the presence of God? And the answer is simple. 
put yourself where God can meet you. Simple. Put yourself where God will, will see you, will meet you. Moses' prayer was answered, but he has not yet received what he was asking for. Until he went to a place where he would meet God. Where he could see the presence of God. In the case of Moses, the Bible says they camped. And God gave him instructions. There must be a place far from the other people, outside. And that is where Moses went. And then Africa in that place, each and every one, Bane Bayemi, Mo Mabatin, Kota Muminyakum, Yadi Tente Tabona, when they see a cloud, Motenting, El in an iri, in the tent of meeting. El Mudimo Olaite Moshe, Hor Ayahe, outside. And whoever would want to talk to God, Unatanetayoko. There must be a specific place. And as long as you are doing, some offending, God's presence will be with you wherever you go. Where do you need to go to find God? In the tent of meeting. That that's on a translation here. Tente ya we Far outside the camp. Far outside the camp. Far from everyone. And if everyone within the camp wants to meet, wants to talk to God, wants the presence of God, he will have to go there. But you cannot just ask. What's going on? Believe who you are going to receive. Otherwise, that prayer, my friend, I carry weight. God is always more willing to give than we are to receive. Hence, Abu Layla asked. Whatever you ask in my name, and you believe that you are going to receive, you have already received. That is a promise. And you must be expectant. In other words, when you ask, you must expect to receive. Because if you ask in doubt, there is nothing that you are going to receive in return. Now, Moses knew exactly how Kupa Mutim. He knew. He knew very well. For God will do men. And then he said, Moses, he said to God, I need to see your glory. I need to see your glory. He was almost like demanding to see God's glory. Now, somebody might take an offense. But what about in the church, in the community, in the workplace? They want to attempt or they attempt to serve out of their own strength out of their own wisdom. They think that they are there. 
but my friend, I've got bad news. That is going to lead you to burn out. Why? Because biblically says, you are doing all these wrong things to impress people, not to serve me as your God. You are doing all of these things because you are not spiritual. And then as a result, you are going to have been out. Now, we need to look at our spiritual as a pond. Yaka Sidiba. Sidiba say no more each and every time when we spend time in the presence of God. The more time we spend with God, the more water is going to get into the pond. And the our will overflow out of the pond. But as they flow out, Metia are you a stream of living water because of the time that you have spent with God? But what do we do? By impressing people. You want to fill the pond from the bucket by not spending time in the presence of God. And then as a result, nothing is going to get out of the pond. In other words, you can try and spend so much time with yourself, with your friend, thinking that you are the man, you are the lady. My friend, you are not getting anywhere. You need the presence of God. You need the presence of God. Secondly, God's glory is revealed in his number one mercy we need God's mercy we managed to go over 2023 to 2024 it is only through God's mercy somebody died earlier somebody died an hour ago that's God's mercy number one number two God's grace. Remember, in the book of Corinthians, Paul said, your grace is sufficient. Without grace, we are nothing. Number three, compassion. Number four, faithfulness. That's God. And the last one, justice. God's love and mercy are truly wonderful. And we will benefit from all this. I'm going to ask a question. What does the book of Exodus teach us today? Number one, God saves he saves us. But he does things his own way. He does things his own way, his own time. And for his glory. And again, the book of Exodus is teaching us to expect something from God if we ask. He also gives us a reason to trust him in difficult times. Remember, the Israelites were in the wilderness. And by the way, the trip that they were supposed to take between Egypt and Canaan, it's only 11 kilometers. 11 days. 
11 days. But instead, they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Why? That was part of training. That was part of development. In order to believe that without God's grace, without God's mercy, without God's compassion, we are nothing. But if we pray, He will respond. Now, Exodus show how God is at work to save the world from sin, from death, and from the devil. By providing us with the Ten Commandments. That is part. Yeah, who is safe from death, from sin, even from the devil, even from ourselves. Because we tend to be reckless at times. Exodus also shows us that we can do nothing apart from God. We can do absolutely nothing. If Renahana or Rona, we can do everything that we want. And this is what God said. But Moses stood in the camp. And he said, God, I cannot go forward without you. I'm not going to take one more step without you. These people I am leading, these people you gave me to lead them, are not going to do that unless you go with us. Because we need you. We need you. Moses knew without God, without the presence of God, they won't even reach the promised land. There are two key lessons that we can take from this book. The book shows how God kept Pharaoh from continuing to oppress the Israelites and from destroying them. That was a plan from God. The second one, the book also shows how God moved the people of Israel into the wilderness to begin the process of developing them into the nation he wanted them to become. And we must also remember, by the time Bafika, the promised land, it was a new generation. Because the previous generation, Etulionko Echepita, was stubborn. And God was true to his word. He said, if my presence is going to go with you, I'm going to destroy. And that is exactly what he did. And from the people, Baba Tulionko Echepita, only Caleb, and Joshua entered the promised land. Even Moses was not allowed to cross over because he disobeyed. This is a reminder that the deliverance comes from development. Now, what does Exodus mean spiritually? Because Rebulelaga spiritual restoration and revival. Regardless of where we are or the time that have passed, any great deliverance happened because God knows our name. How is a mutu? You call this person by his name. And today I am reminding you what a God knows your name. Because he's got your name in the palm of his hand. He calls us by name and come for us. Just as he did with the Israelites. 
He knows your name. He knows my name. Now, again, Exodus is not just going out, but going after. Because God is going after his children. God is going after you and me. Now, Kebulela ka the Israelites, Baba Limuleto, they are on a journey. Myself and you are on a journey as in 2024. How do we relate our story, our journey to the journey Yabanaba Israel? Now, when you look at the Israelites, there are so many similarities. The story of Exodus makes religious sense to people only to the degree that they are themselves working in a journey of faith. I get to this evening. January. Are we on a journey of faith or not? If we are walking in the spirit and listening to the spirit, we can either or we can easily relate the stories to our own life and identify our experiences with the Israelites. Because the Holy Spirit is always there. When you are doing something wrong, there is a little voice somewhere in the back of your head that says, Don't. Baba Mbaragi gut feeling. And if you ignore that little voice, you are ignoring the Holy Spirit. The last question here that I want to ask. What are we learning from Exodus 33? What are we learning? Right off from 2023. Some of us, 2023 was a great year. Renally, a lot of achievements. Some of us, from 2023 with broken hearts because we failed. Hence, give us a question, Yahori. What can we learn from Exodus 33? Moses here had a problem. He was very concerned of leading the Israelites. Unite their thinking. Unite their behavior. Hence, Aramudimar, I need your presence. It was almost like Solomon when he was given an opportunity to ask from God what he wanted. But instead, he said, God, please give me wisdom. Because how am I going to lead these people? So Moses was very concerned. Now, what is your concern, Moli What is your challenge, Moli Now, the reason Moses was concerned, he thought he was not up. To the task of leading these people. And you must remember how Moshe Mudimomoroma to release the Israelites who negotiate and Pharaoh. He came up with so many excuses. So many excuses. The last excuse that he made was Hagi Kono Hogolela. That is not a problem. 
You have a spokesperson, your brother will be your spokesperson. There are so many things that Moses, he was doubting if he was a true leader. Now I'm asking you a question. Are you up to the task in 2024 or not? Or are you still living in the past? Now, that is when God promised to be with him. Modi doubting the outer heights eo. Modi challenging the outer heights eo. Modi mu wila mute peace or I will be with you. But only not. I will give you peace and rest throughout the journey. I'm going to be with you, Moses. I'm going to strengthen you. Do your job. 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 Because I'm going to be with you. Now, as we face our challenges, at least there is one truth that remains. And it also augurs for me and you. The Lord is with us. We just need to ask. We just need to invite Him. We have New Year resolutions. If you did not invite the presence of God in your New Year resolutions, you have wasted your time. Because you have already failed. You actually plan to fail. Because you need to go to the basics. Ask and it will be given to you. In conclusion, then Moses said, if you don't go with us personally, don't let us move a step from this place. If you don't go with us, how will anyone ever know that your people and I have found favor with you? How to number 2024? When you started this journey, you still have 11 months ahead of you. And you cannot win by your own will unless you have the presence of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that you gave us life. We thank you for this moment, Heavenly Father. We are so grateful that we can still call upon you when we feel weak. We can still call upon you when there is darkness in front of us. We have just shared your words, Heavenly Father. The word that you have prepared. It is my prayer, dear Lord, that this prayer, this word, that I have just prayed, go into the hearts of your children and transform their lives and transform them. Let this word give them wisdom. Let this word persuade them as they go into the new challenges in 2024. Let them see things in a different light because of the presence of yourself. Let this word do its job, dear Lord, so that at the end of the day, your presence could be seen because you are God Almighty. You are creator of, of heaven and earth. I thank you, dear Lord, for giving me this opportunity to spread this weight. I thank you, dear Lord, for allowing Good Life Radio Station to give me this platform in order to spread the word of God, the good news that you have given to me. Bless this radio station. Bless, bless each and everyone who was listening to this message. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.